Mr. President, I rise today to encourage my colleagues to rescind a recently promulgated Fish and Wildlife Service regulation by the Obama administration and to support the corresponding resolution to disapproval that the majority leader just brought up and that we uh, unanimously move forward to debate, HJR 69. Now, Mr. President, there are few, if any, people in the world who love their lands and wildlife more than Alaskans. In Alaska, our lands are the lifeblood that sustain us, that feed our bodies, our families, our souls. They are a deep and enduring part of our culture. Our hunting traditions are very much alive in Alaska. Alaskans hunt for food, for cultural reasons, and even for survival. There are people in my state whose families have called our beautiful and rugged lands home for thousands of years, living side by side with more re recent arrivals. Alaska has also the well-earned reputation of having one of the best managed, most sustainable fish and game populations anywhere in America or anywhere in the world for that matter. We have an abundance of wildlife that most states and most countries can only dream of. We do this year after year, generation after generation, through a rigorous scientific process that allows for and encourages public participation through our Board of Game, our Board of Fish, our Fish and Game Department, and to make sure that we manage our fish and game for sustainability as required by the Alaska Constitution and that we take into account the needs of our citizens, the needs of Alaskans. It's not an easy process. It can be contentious, but all Alaskans take this very seriously. In Alaska, we respect the land and everything in it. That special connection and our ability to manage our own lands and resources was explicitly recognized in federal law when Alaska became a state. The Alaska Statehood Act, passed in this body in 1958, specifically granted Alaska the authority to manage fish and wildlife on not only state lands, but on federal lands, unless Congress passes a law to the contrary. And by the way, Mr. President, that's the same authority granted to all states, as granted to Ohio, granted to New Mexico. All states in America have this authority. Further, in 1980, this body, the Congress of the United States, passed the Alaska National Interest Lands Conservation Act, designating over a hundred million acres of land in my great state as federal conservation units, including over 70 million acres, I believe larger than the state of New Mexico, as wildlife refuges in one state. Now, many Alaskans didn't like this bill. Several saw this as a massive federal usurpation of our lands. But our congressional delegation fought to include explicit provisions in this federal law that make it abundantly clear that the state of Alaska still had primacy in managing fish and game throughout the entire state. State lands, federal lands. When that act was passed, it explicitly stated, quote, nothing in this act is intended to enlarge or diminish the responsibility and authority of the state of Alaska for the management of fish and wildlife on public lands, unquote. Pretty clear language. Very important language, by the way, to Alaskans. ANILCA, that's the statute we're talking about. That's what we call it in Alaska. That's the federal law that I'm just talking about, passed in 1980, made numerous other commitments to Alaskans about how the federal government would not, would not usurp the power of the state or our citizens to live the life that we have in Alaska. Well, how quickly the feds forget. How quickly the feds forget what this law did what this law requires, 
On August 5, 2016, the Obama administration's Fish and Wildlife Service finalized a rule that, one, restricted certain state-approved fish and game management practices, two, limited public input in the wildlife management process, and three, expanded closure procedures on refuges in Alaska, making it easier for keeping people shut out of these federal lands in our state. This rule is not based on sound science. Thousands of Alaskans and other Americans opposed it, tried to work with the feds to get them to moderate it or rescind it to no avail. No avail. It's not based on established wildlife management principles, and it is certainly not based on federal law. The Fish and Wildlife Service didn't take this action because Alaska's sustainable and abundant populations of fish and game or their habitats were being threatened. It took this action because it wanted control. It wanted to control Alaska's fish and wildlife and because it subjectively disapproved of the way that Alaska's game was being managed by our Department of Fish and Game and by the Alaska Board of Game. But the Federal Fish and Wildlife Service does not have this authority. To make this clear, we are proceeding today with this resolution of disapproval under the Congressional Re Review Act, HJR 69, to rescind that August 5th Obama Fish and Wildlife Service rule. The House has already passed this measure under Congressman Don Young's leadership. So I want to encourage all of my colleagues, Democrats and Republicans, to vote in favor of this resolution. It is backed by the force of law, the principles of federalism, and respect for the Alaska Native people who have been hunting and fishing, subsisting off the land in Alaska for generations. It is also, Mr. President, supported by millions of Americans across the country and wildlife professionals in every state in the Union who are committed to the conservation of the abundant species of wildlife in my home state and in theirs. So why should my colleagues support rescinding this Fish and Wildlife Service regulation? Well, first and foremost, as I've already mentioned, it clearly usurps power promised to the states, and it ignores federal law. Unfortunately, faced with the federal law it disagreed with, the Fish and Wildlife Service took the same route that other federal agencies have been taking over the last few years, simply writing a reg to bypass the will of Congress and the American people by, sim by simply moving forward with a preferred policy preference via regulation and ignoring the law. That's an issue that every member of this body, whether you're a Democrat or Republican, should be concerned about and vigilant to reverse. And it's not a, it's not a partisan issue, Mr. President. It's a, federaliz it's a federalism issue. It's a states' rights issue. That's why my state of Alaska, led by a governor who's an independent and a lieutenant governor who's a Democrat, sued to overturn the Obama administration regulation. Now this litigation that my state en enacted against the federal government cites federal laws like ANILCA, which declares that the state of Alaska, quote, has jurisdiction over the management of fish and wildlife on public lands throughout the state, unquote. That's the federal law. The law is clear and of course it makes sense from a management perspective. Alaska is a patch of many different ownerships of our land, state, federal, native lands. The moose and bear in our great state don't know these borders. One agency needs to be in charge, and that's the state agency. And while it might be true that this Obama administration regulation, as written, only applies and impacts Alaska, it's a precedent that should trouble every member of this body, every state in the union.
because if they can do it in Alaska, they can do it anywhere. That's why the Association of Fish and Wildlife Agencies, the state agencies charged with managing wildlife in all 50 states and territories from California, New Mexico, and New Jersey, all support this resolution. They all support overturning the Obama administration fish and wildlife reg. All 50 states. The people who know these issues support what we're doing here on the Senate floor right now. A second and related reason for the broad bipartisan support, not only in Alaska, but across the country for rescinding this fish and wildlife regulation is because it significantly reduces the public's participation in managing lands and wildlife in Alaska. Before this rule came out, the harvest of fish and wildlife on Alaska refuges was governed by Alaska's Board of Game and Board of Fish. And the process was highly accessible. I've been to Board of Game meetings. It's open to the public and responsive to the public. But this new regulation gives the federal government a veto over state regulations issued by the boards with no public process, no public input. The rule also makes closures of federal lands more subject to the whims of federal officials than to the input of the people whom they serve. So it shuts down the public process, Mr. President, which is critical to the successful, sustainable management of fish and game in my state. This federal regulation also undermines subsistence. Mr. President, I want to talk about subsistence for a little bit. In Alaska, subsistence isn't just a word. It isn't just a catchphrase. It isn't just a slogan. It's not what people do for the benefit of tourism. It's critical. And that public participation element that is healthy is critical to the healthy management of our fish and game, but it also enables the professionals to learn from the people, particularly the native people in my state, what we call traditional knowledge in Alaska. And I mentioned subsistence in my state isn't just a, a catchphrase or a slogan. Subsistence encompasses the customary and traditional use of fish, wildlife, plant resources, preserving cultural traditions, supplying basic necessities like food and firewood and clothing, and providing for barter, for trade, and income in subsistence and cash-based rural economies. It is serious business in my state. Subsistence in Alaska is life, literally, and it's been so for thousands of years. In so many of my state's villages, there's no grocery store, there's no Costco, there's no Whole Foods. If you don't get a moose in the fall or have enough salmon in the summer that you catch, you might have tr trouble surviving in the winter. This is serious business. And in other places in Alaska where we do have small grocery stores, the costs are often more than twice or three times or four times the national average for basic necessities. Even President Obama, when he visited Alaska in 2015, once he visited our state, once he went out to the rural communities, once he saw it, he understood this. When he came to Alaska, he said, quote, you're looking at prices that are double, in some cases higher, for basic necessities like milk, like orange juice, like other produce. That's part of the reason why the subsistence economy in Alaska is so important. This is the president, former president of the United States making this comment. One, one wonders why his Fish and Wildlife Service then issued a reg that attacked subsistence. But to be honest, most Americans and certainly most senators don't fully understand this. But again, due, the, due to the tenacity of Alaska's congressional delegation, 
former members like Ted Stevens, current members like Don Young in the House, federal law recognizes the importance of subsistence in Alaska. The protection of subsistence rights in ANILCA and other federal legislation is listed throughout our federal laws. Specifically, ANILCA states, quote, the opportunity for rural residents engaged in a subsistence way of life must continue to be so. It further goes on to state the federal government's actions in Alaska should, quote, have the least adverse impact on rural residents who depend upon subsistence uses of resources of such lands, unquote. This issue of subsistence is important to thousands and thousands of my constituents. It's not a theoretical issue. It's critical. But it's no more important to the Alaska Native populations in my state, close to 20% of my state. Mr. President, in 2014, the Alaska Federation of Natives ratified a resolution criticizing a proposal from the federal government similar to the one that we're debating, to, debating today, and they stated the, po the following in their resolution. Alaska Natives have served as stewards of their traditional lands and resources, maintaining healthy and productive ecosystems for thousands of years, and maintain the belief that human beings are an integral part of naturally functioning ecosystems, not separate from them. That's what all Alaskans believe. And yet, despite federal laws emphasizing the importance of subsistence to all Alaskans, and pleas and letters from hundreds of Alaska Natives asking the federal government not to negatively impact their subsistence way of life and opportunities with this new Fish and Wildlife Service regulation, the Fish and Wildlife Service persisted. And they promulgated this regulation in the face of opposing voices in Alaska and federal law that says they don't have the authority to do this. And you know it was targeted for subsistence because in the Fish and Wildlife Service's initial rule, that rule stated that the law and the policy had to, quote, take into consideration the fact that humans are dependent on wildlife refuge subsistence resources, unquote. That was the original draft rule. So subsistence matters. That was in there. A nod to federal law. Guess what happened with the final rule? That entire section on subsistence was removed by the federal government, showing that this law is an anti-subsistence law which violates federal law. They didn't want Alaskans to subsist off their lands as required by federal law. And as Alaska's Attorney General, Jana Lindemuth said, who was again appointed by an independent governor from my state, quote, these federal regulations are not about protecting the state's wildlife numbers, these regulations are about the federal government trying to control Alaskans' way of life, unquote. Now, Mr. President, hunting is a way of life in Alaska. You're a hunter. You understand it's cultural. It provides subsistence and even protection for our citizens. But let's be clear, the Fish and Wildlife Service regulation at issue today that we are debating is an anti-hunting rule. Pure and simple. That this is the case became very clear when the former Fish and, Wild Fish and Wildlife Service Director, Dan Ash, who promulgated this regulation, questioned the ethics of our hunters in Alaska in a Huffington Post column. He said that, quote, some of Alaska's practices are wholly at odds with America's long tradition of ethical, sportsmanlike, fair chase hunting, unquote. So that's the former Fish and Wildlife Service director. You know where he's coming from on this. Now, along these lines, I anticipate some of my colleagues on the other side of the aisle, I see one of them down here already, are going to come down, and what they're going to do, they're going to start touting this parade of horribles spurred on by anti-hunting groups to convince our colleagues to vote against this resolution of approval, what we want to have passed. You might hear phrases from them like, 
Alaska's practices constitute, quote, a war on wolves, or a, quote, black eye for ethical hunters, with the implication that my constituents are not ethical, or not ethical hunters. You might even see my colleagues re repeat the false and mis misleading claims that have been run on TV by certain groups about alleged unethical hunting and game management practices in Alaska. So I'd like to make a suggestion or two to my colleagues who are coming down here to speak against this resolution of disapproval. First, please try to do so with a sense of humility and a sense of history. Yes, one or two of you may have been accomplished hunters in your own right, are still accomplished hunters in your own right. I respect that. I love to hunt. But that doesn't mean you have as much or any knowledge or understanding of my state's long history and distinguished record of fish and game management. You might prefer your meat wrapped in cellophane at the grocery store, that's fine. But I ask that you don't criticize the thousands of Alaskans who have to hunt for their food and who value hunting as a deep part of their culture. I would also caution you may, from making claims that Alaska's wildlife officials allow for unethical hunting and management practices that require the federal government to intervene in my state's long history of distinguished fish and game management. Because such an argument would be at odds with the consistent and numerous awards the state of Alaska has received for its outstanding management of fish and game year after year after year. American Fisheries Society awards, awards from the Department of Interior, Wildlife Society, Association of Fish and Wildlife Agencies. Those who manage wildlife in Alaska are the best in their field. But Mr. President, it's not just Alaskans who take issue or will take issue with such statements and I'm sure we're gonna hear on the floor here. Let me just read you a list of hunting and conservation groups that support this resolution of disapproval, that in other words support overturning the fish and wildlife rule at issue today. It's a very long list and it's actually longer than this. Ducks Unlimited. National Wildlife Turkey Federation, Pheasants Forever, Quails Forever, Boone and Crockett Club, Congressional Sportsman's Foundation, Delta Waterfowl, Alaska Outdoor Council, Alaska Professional Hunters Association, the National Professional Outfitters and Guides Association of America, Territorial Sportsmen, the National Rifle Association, Safari Club International, the list goes on and on and on. These groups represent millions of hunters, conservationists, wildlife enthusiasts, and wildlife scientists who represent millions of Americans who are focused on the model of conservation that we all are supportive of and are the backbone of habitat and species conservation in our country, these groups. Every one of them is supportive of what we're trying to do on the Senate floor today. And these groups certainly don't consider themselves unethical hunters. To the contrary, they care deeply about conservation and abundant wildlife populations, not only for themselves, but generations of Americans to come. They've dedicated their life to this. And they represent Americans from across the 50 states. Montana, West Virginia, New Mexico, New Jersey. Their values, like the values held by Alaskans with regard to conservation, with regard to hunting, should not be doubted, and I certainly hope aren't gonna be attacked on the Senate floor. In closing, Mr. President, I believe in respectful and informed debate. And sometimes it certainly requires reaching beyond your own experience to listen to others with opposing views. Now, I took the opportunity to do that just the other day. I had a conversation with the president and CEO of the Humane Society about the issue and resolutions we're discussing today. And I know that he and others are leading the opposition to this, but we had a very respectful conversation. 
we heard each other's views. And though we likely won't agree on this issue, I hope that he felt that I talked with him in respect and listened to him, because that's what I did. But perhaps my colleagues who are going to speak against this resolution today should maybe perhaps do the same. I would hope that those who come down on the floor to oppose overturning this rule would have picked up the phone and maybe called Alaska's Department of Fish and Game or talked to a biologist there or maybe talked to the chairman of the board of game and asked if he's an ethical hunter or maybe call a store in remote Alaska to ask about food prices or make some inquiries about the lack of stores in dozens of villages that rely on subsistence or call an Alaska native leader and see how important subsistence is to his life and his culture. Maybe you would have called one of my constituents who wrote in opposing this rule. He's an Alaska native who lives in rural Alaska and whose grandfather taught him to hunt and fish. Here's what he wrote to us. Quote, please do not pass these type of regulations that will change my future. These lands are dear to Alaska natives. And I feel that some of the fish and wildlife workers are biased, as well as listening to the wrong people. By the wrong people, I mean fish and wildlife officials who do not understand my subsistence rights, who do not want, who do not work in the villages, who want to take away my right to hunt. Mr. President, this is about the rule of law, primacy, federalism, but it's about much more than that. It's about real people. People like my constituents. I urge my colleagues to support our resolution of disapproval and rescind this regulation that violates the law, undermines subsistence in Alaska, and will do harm to my state and other states. I yield the floor.